Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well in my last video I showed you the secret project I've been working on for a few weeks. My troll, my first troll makeover kit. I've already got an idea for the next one. <laughs> so this is where we're, we're going to be transforming little old Willy Whacker Stone into a punk rock star. Skid vicious. <laughs> Although there's enough scope here to very much put your own a spin on it. So in that last video we had a look at the kit and um, what you get inside and um, what it's all about and how to get hold of it. This time I'm going to actually get in there and start um, start on my makeover mission. So let's have a look at the let's have a look at what I've got on the desk. Bring it down a bit. So um, here's my little troll as he comes in the kit. So this is uh, this is little Willy Whacker Stone. <laughs> He looks so innocent <laughs> and uh, here's all the other bits and bobs that you get that you, you get in the kit apart from the wrapping and para paraphernalia so I've got a couple of fancy toothpicks there <laughs> some leather strap might use that for making belts or cuffs or something a bit tartan ribbon for patches I've got my findings in there so this is all things like chain and cord and jump rings and things like that we'll come to a bit later this is the uh, felting wool that um, we can use to, to create the hair. And then I've got different kinds of fabric. I've got this sort of animal print one. I've got some craft foam, silver lurex, some uh, white uh, t-shirt fabric. All of the fabrics are quite um, fine because including the denim it's not really denim it's chambray because when you're working on such a small scale if the fabric's too thick and chunky it just doesn't hang right so this is this is quite thin this is quite thin and this one's quite thin this is like a, a black sort of synthetic with a slight sort of stretch in it here's our pattern here's our heat transfer for for um decorating the t-shirt or jacket or whatever there's all the pattern pieces that's my my wrapping paper save that for something and let's just have a look at how my so when the, the first little prototype that i made here's my my skid vicious so um he's gone he was made from um a troll exactly like this so you the hat's removable there's no hair there you take the jumper off and you got <laughs> poor little naked willy wacker stone <laughs> <laughs> waiting to be transformed. I'm going to get rid of my head now because that's going to get in the way. He's got a um, big audition coming up in a few days and he needs a makeover to uh, turn him into the punk rock star that he wants to be. <laughs> in in this one, um, obviously I, I added the hair, I put a streak of white in, I used some dilute PVA just to sort of stiffen up the ends. Um, I've cut some jump rings and things, made little holes in his little face to make piercings, a little stud in his ear. I used a, a permanent fine liner to to give him knuckle tattoos. So he's got he's got punk on that hand and rock on the other. He's got a chain on his trousers. He's got just he's got just Johnny Creations. <laughs> uh, skanky hooers, <laughs> which is which is a, a saying that Johnny likes to use, and uh, the name of Skid's band. Um, he's got a tartan patch, he's got ripped jeans and he's got little handmade boots. Now this was the first, the prototype boots made out of Fimo. Um, I've, I've worked on a new way, a more user friendly way of doing that now and I've made these little boots out of the leather fabric that's in the, that's in the kit. They are quite fiddly, they're cute but they are fiddly to do and um, if you don't fancy doing the boots don't knock yourself out trying to do it because they, they are fiddly you've got you've got to love doing small fiddly things you can't be really dedicated to make them they are cute i thought it was worth it but having said that trolls you know trolls love to go barefoot you could just make like a like a, a leather ankle cuff with some studs on it instead or you could tattoo his give him a manicure you know um he's even got a little naughty cigarette there which is made with one of the little little trinkets in here which is actually a cake holder a, ca a cake candle holder. I don't want to do exactly the same thing again. I was toying with the idea of turning him into, you know, giving him a girlfriend. But then I've got this one that uh, my my little, not so little, <laughs> step granddaughter Macy gave me, her her childhood troll. Um, and I think she'd make a sweet girlfriend for him. So I think I'm going to make another member of the band 
and uh, and then I'm going to do the, the girlfriend separately because I think I've got plenty here to do both of them. So that's the thing, you can use the pattern again, you know, if you've got trolls, if you've got a little collection of trolls, you can use this, these patterns over and over again to, to dress your trolls. I did wonder about doing a... Now, for anybody that doesn't want to buy the kit and you've got loads of stuff and trolls and things already, I could do the pattern as a, as a download on Etsy. Which might be a good idea because I'm, I'm only going to make the kits available in, in the UK because of postage problems and stuff. But the trouble is with the price, the price of postage and the price of the Etsy fees, you know, it gets ridiculous. So, um, so let me know if you would be interested in that and I'll have a look at doing that. The first thing is to cut out the pattern pieces, really. This is the heat transfer. Now, I did, I, this reminds me to point it out. I splashed this with water earlier on. These are inkjet printed, so don't get water on them. <laughs> Once they've been ironed on, they'll be absolutely fine. Nothing's going to shift them. But at this stage, don't get water on them. When I'm ready to cut my pattern pieces, I will decide which of these images I want to use. I'll cut it out. They're printed in reverse. So I'll turn them face down and press them with a hot iron for about a minute. Um, and that will fuse them to the fabric. After that, they're flexible. You can stitch into them. You can wash them. This heat transfer paper is really good. It's called Trans Our Dream, suitable for inkjet printers. And uh, obviously there are eight there. You're not going to end up using them all, but you might want one on the front of the T-shirt, one on the back, one on the matching jacket, you know. And as I say, you'll have enough there to dress another troll as well, so get another one to keep in company. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going one step at a time. Let's get the pattern cut out. And I'm not going to cut the boot pieces out yet. Let's just concentrate on the clothes first. I printed the pattern out on card so that it'll be more durable. You'll notice that one of the sheets has got this key on it because when we when we made this up, I say ways, this is my son Tom helped me with all the techie stuff here. We thought about the possibility of, of doing it as a download. Now if people were going to download it and print it off themselves, if you want it to fit this size of troll, you need to make sure your printer's printing it out at the right size because sometimes it'll print at 80% or it will shrink it down to allow for margins and stuff. It should be okay if you tell your printer to print at 100%. It should be fine. But as a double check, you can make sure this square actually measures five centimetres and then you know everything's at the right size. Anyway, let's put that to one side. So yeah, I printed it on card so that it'll be more durable and then you can put it down on the fabric pieces and just draw around it because these pieces are way too small and fiddly to be pinning bits of paper on and things and you might want to make your troll a whole wardrobe you know <laughs> and use these pieces again and again so you can see from the markings that there's a half centimeter seam allowance on the clothes pieces not on the boots but we won't go into that right now I'm just going to finish cutting the rest of these pieces and then I'll come back to you if you wanted to make these even more durable you could put um, a strip of packing tape clear clear packing tape over the just put it over the whole piece before you cut it out and that will give it um, even more durability um, also this is inkjet printed so again that would um that would mean you wouldn't have to worry about getting it wet so that probably would be a really good idea if you especially if you want to use the pattern again now i haven't put any needle and thread in with the kit because i think really it's just going to need basic you know whatever household needle and um you know probably black and white thread um things that most of us who do crafty things have already got i'm going to be hand stitching everything i guess you could do these on a machine and it'd be really fast but i just don't like getting the machine out really okay so here's all my pieces Oh, I haven't quite finished that one. I cut them out as carefully as I can. You might prefer to use a craft knife to cut them out. Oh, a little dinky pair of scissors like that is ideal for me. Two parts of the shirt pattern and three parts to the trouser pattern. That's because the left front of the trousers is different from the right front. Let's do the trousers first. Shall I go for jeans again or shall I do something different this time? kind of feeling like I because I did jeans last time do I want to do something different I've got I could do red trousers could have leather trousers there's enough especially if you didn't want to do the boots I don't enjoy stitching the leather so much maybe I'll save this for his girlfriend 
There are so I think every single person that makes these up will do something different. Now you need to bear in mind that for the um, image transfer, you can only use that on the fabrics that will take a hot iron. So obviously it's not going to be a good idea on this fabric. But I could do it on the denim, and I could do it on the on this this t-shirt material. Since he's got the blue jeans and the white t-shirt, for this one I'm going to do the blue jeans again, but do him a black t-shirt and then a denim waistcoat. And I can put a transfer on, on the back of the denim waistcoat and maybe some studs along the back or something. Just do something a bit different from what I did last time. But the, the process is going to be the same. So let's cut out some little trousers. I should have enough to do... So you can see here each piece tells you how many you're going to need to cut so i need to cut need to allow for cutting two of them and i need those two hmm does that mean i haven't got enough for to do a waistcoat to do a waistcoat because this is this makes a shirt if i wanted to make a waistcoat i can just shape it i can you can adapt these this is just a basic shirt and trousers and that's the front of the shirt. So I can cut it, leave it open down the front and I can make the sleeves really short and that would make like a waistcoat. There's so many things you could do. I mean, I could I could turn the shirt into like a vest and layer him up so he's got a, a white vest over the top of a black t-shirt or, or whatever. There's plenty here to play with. I'm just gonna use a pencil now to transfer these pattern pieces onto the fabric just using a soft pencil it's not going to show so uh, I'm not going to worry about it for the hems I would suggest don't bother either cut it off or deliberately fray the bottom or if you really want to glue it up I, I wouldn't bother sewing little hems I certainly wouldn't double it over because it'll get too bulky if you wanted to do a hem just turn it under once and do a do a little a sort of uh, overhand stitch on the back um, but I will probably just be leaving the edges just as they are it's not too frayy anyway and he is a troll so you know so I need to cut two back trouser pieces so this one needs to go the other way around I mean with this fabric it's I don't think there's a lot in it anyway but I'm just going to do that and then cut my little pieces so I'm going to work through and cut out all my little pattern pieces now you don't need to sit and watch me do that and then I'll come back to you okay so I've got my pattern pieces all cut there's my two back trouser pieces, my front left trouser and my front right trouser. Now with the front left trouser you can see that there's a little line just there and you want to just cut where that little line is. I'm just eyeballing it there like that. That's just to allow me to do a double fold back. So if you look at the instructions, it tells you to fold the left front opening back twice to the inside along the fold lines and the right front opening back once along the fold lines and stitch them. So this one just gets folded back once like that. I'm just going to finger press it like that. And then I'm just going to do a little running stitch along here, nothing fancy. It's not like these are going to get anywhere. It's not like you're going to be taking them on and off and, um, you know, putting them in the wash or anything. And then this one, you can see on the pattern, I've marked it A and B. So fold it along that that first, I should have called done it A and B the other way around, actually. Um, fold it along this line first and then back again. So you're just folding it back twice. So I'm folding it back once in line with that curve there so just follow what what's on your printed piece folding it back once like that give it a bit of a finger press and then fold it back again and that's why you have to make that little snip to allow that piece to fold back there you go so it sounds complicated in the instructions it's quite hard to write things to write instructions but that's all you're doing folding that one back twice and that one back once and I'm just going to run a little running stitch along there I'll be back when I've done that, it won't take me a minute. Okay, so I've done my little rows of, um, I've just done a little, did a running stitch and I went back up again. I, I went all the way back down with a running stitch and then went back and filled in the gaps. It's not really gonna show that much, I'm not bothered. I'm sure you could do it a lot more neatly if you wanted to. The next step 
is to stitch the fronts right side together along the crotch seam and you can see that if you're not sure which seam I mean it's all marked on the on the pattern pieces so I'm going to stitch them together around that curve and again about half a centimeter seam allowance and I'm just going to use a little back stitch just do myself a couple of stitches to to anchor the thread at the beginning and then just do a back stitch and now I've got to the end I'll just do another couple of oops <laughs> straight through my finger <laughs> take that thread under there just to keep it out of the way there we go so I've just stitched it as shown on the pattern piece and then you can see how when they're stitched together that this piece will now overlap that when it's on and what I'm going to do is put it on the troll and just sew it closed at the end you could make it so that you can take them on and off if you think you are going to want to dress your troll in different outfits but that's that's not what I was aiming at and you could put a tiny popper there you can get those really tiny ones for dolls clothes or a little tiny bit of velcro okay so that's that bit and the next step is to stitch the backs back pieces right sides together along the crotch seam and as before the crotch seam is marked on the pattern piece if you're not sure I'm just going to hold them together there's no need to pin these pieces they're so tiny you can just hold them so the crotch seam is this curved one along here I'm just going to do a little back stitch all the way along there and then I'll be back there we go that's uh, that's those stitched together so that's the back of my trousers and now we stitch the backs and fronts right side together along the side seams. Again, it's written on the pattern piece, but it'll probably be obvious by now. So I'm just going to now, again, half half a centimetre um, seam allowance, I'm just going to stitch along there and along this side as well. And they're really starting to take shape. Right, so I've uh, done both the side seams and I've gone one step ahead and stitch the um, center crotch seam as well not crotch seam um, inside leg seam so it's marked inside leg on there you do your you do your side seams like that and then you open it out and uh, and do the inside leg along there and that's it that's all that's all the sewing done on our trousers now you might find that it it comes out that they don't quite line up don't worry about it just trim it off until they do and as I say I'm not going to bother with any fancy hemming you can if you want to I'm just going to tidy them up like that I might fray them out a bit later on um, but they're troll trousers I don't feel like they need to be neat and if you if you try doing a normal hem where you turn it over once and again it's just going to make it all a bit stiff I think but certainly if you wanted a tidier hem you could just turn it up once and just run a little a running stitch in a matching colour or or contrast him we could do like Bay City Rollers and have tartan along the bottom use the ribbon couldn't you <laughs> not the Bay City Rollers were punk but you know okay so that's my little my little trousers all done and then when they go on the troll I'll cross them over like that top and I'll just put a little stitch through there so let's just check for fit shall we I've only been sat here for about half an hour doing this so far it's quite quick the uh, the most laborious part is definitely the boots so uh, if you haven't got good eyes and lots of patience <laughs> I would say forget about the boots and uh, use one of my other suggestions instead. Well, those trousers are fitting pretty perfectly. Um, you don't want them being so tight that you can't get them on. Um, I don't want to bother with elastic. It occurs to me that what I really would quite like to do now is give this one braces. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a little pair of braces. It's like I could use little strips of the leather. I've got this, but that might just be a bit too bulky. Yeah, I might just do little strips instead. Save this for like a, I thought it'd be good for a belt or a collar. <laughs> yeah, because I do want this one to look different. So yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking braces. Now, 
these are quite long you've got you've got to leave room for the their little legs are really short and you need room for the boots as well but of course the jeans can ruckle up over the top of the boots like I've got them there um, this is enough to allow for turning a hem up I'm not going to bother I'm just going to cut them off so I think I might just cut them a little bit shorter you could also just glue the hem up as well if you've got a fabric something like um, this kind of glue would do maybe I should do that just to see how it works okay let's try this then oh that came out a bit too fast didn't it if it doesn't work I'll still just cut it off can't I it's very lazy of me really I mean it wouldn't take that long to just run a quick stitch around there they're so tiny so when you turn it when you turn it over if you decide to do that just open up that seam there first and then turn it over it'll just make it neater what I would suggest is just um, open up the seams first so this side seam put a tiny bit of glue either side just to flatten out that side seam and make it stick if you're really clever like me you'll stick your thumb to it <laughs> and then turn it over and glue it down like that it's probably easier to do both the seams first and then work the rest, the rest of the way around let's just, just kind of finger press these seams open a bit Right, so now is the time to um, add any patches or um, um, tears in the jeans that you want to do or anything else. Um, I mean, you could use paint pens on, on here. You could grubby them up, um, make, them look a bit, make them look a bit grubby. Seeing as he's a troll and a punk rocker. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure which I prefer. So that's the hemmed, that's the hemmed version. And my first one, I just left it frayed like that. I just left the edges. Well, they're probably both okay, really. So I'm just gonna um, just make a little slit and then tear a bit of a hole. Yeah, it's pretty convincing. <laughs> Should we have one in the back as well? And then I'm going to cut a little piece of my um, tartan ribbon because I do like that tartan patch on there. Perhaps I shouldn't do it because I've done it on that one. I do love it though. <gasps> Maybe you could have tartan braces instead. And I won't bother with a patch on his jeans. What would that look like? So this is the thing you've got enough scope enough different materials there to very much make this your own and now you don't have to do this i've only just thought of it <laughs> one of the best bits of this is going to be seeing what other people do with the same supplies because there are just so many ways you could go with this i'm gonna um fold this ribbon over i'm gonna fold one end under and that, oh, it's very difficult to do this out at arm's length and then the other end over the top like that and I will probably glue it for speed but I could equally well stitch it and then that will form my, my braces I think perhaps I would just turn an end under first just a tiny end under so I end up with a neat finish um, and then I'm going to stitch them onto the trousers and I'll finish off with I'll find something to use as a little as a little button um, and I'm still not going to actually stitch the trousers closed because I want the shirt I think will, will be tucked into the trousers and I'm probably going to turn this top down like that as well again glue this glue seems to be working pretty well so uh, and sometimes it's neat for such tiny things sometimes it's neater just to just to glue so it's up, up to you really and um, if you've got a good fabric glue um, or if you've got more patience and neater stitching than me you might rather stitch it's totally up to you <laughs> i love those little teeny trousers 
Okay, I'm going to do that and then I'll be back. Right, so I've got my little, <laughs> got my little trousers. I've turned over a, a hem at the top, but just glued it down with the fabric glue. That seems to be working really well. I've got my two little braces ready to go. And now I'm just going to do a plain white t-shirt underneath. I've decided to leave the sleeves and see if I can roll them back so they look like rolled up sleeves. If that doesn't work, I can just cut them off because I want it to be quite short. And then, um, I mean, again, they've got such stubby little arms. <laughs> but this I want to look more like a vest or, or a, a T-shirt with the sleeves rolled right up. Um, so if he had any shoulders, it would be up to his shoulders. <laughs> and then I'm going to um, adapt the shirt pattern to turn it into like a little waistcoat. I've cut one of the shirt fronts and two of the shirt backs. Um, so I, I cut it out, cut it out once and then turned it over to cut it out again. And I've got the right sides towards me. So let's have a look at the instructions. I'm following my own instructions to make sure they make sense. <laughs> so fold the back openings to the inside and stitch. So here's the opening. Ah, now because I've got that little line across there, that means I've got to cut that little clip that little um, line there and there so now because I've got that little bit clipped so this is the right side let's turn this under now so I can turn turn my opening in once and again like that and just do a little uh, running stitch or again I could glue it I'm tempted to just glue everything. The gluing seems to be working really well. I'm so looking forward to seeing what Tori's going to do with this kit. <laughs> She's such a creative person. I'm sure she'll very much put her own spin on it. <laughs> okay, so that's my two front pieces ready. Uh, back pieces, sorry. Now, I'll stitch backs right side together along the centre back seam. So this is the right sides facing me now. It doesn't make too much difference. There is a right and a wrong side of this fabric, but it's not too obvious if you get it wrong. And again, I've marked which seam is which on here to make it easier to follow the pattern instructions. So centre back is this one, so where we just turned the opening in. So I'm going to put them right side together and I'm just going to stitch that centre back seam there. Yep, so now we're going to stitch the front and back pieces together. Right, so I've stitched my underarm stroke side seams. I've stitched a, across the shoulders here which has uh, made me realise that I haven't put that in the instructions so I need to sort that out. Um, and now I'm just gonna just clip into these curves here just a little bit so that doesn't all pucker up when I turn this the right way out. Just trim the seams down a bit now as well. Now I've stitched it. You could finish these beautifully. You know, you could flatten all the seams and top stitch and stuff and really finish them off beautifully if you wanted to. I'm far too lazy by nature to do that myself, but hats off to anybody who, who does. <laughs> there we go, there's my little T-shirt. So um, if you were just making the normal t-shirt, you could either cut the arm off there or stitch a little hem or glue a little hem. Um, I think with this one, I think I just tucked the ends in and, and they've just stayed there because it's only decorative, isn't it? So let's get this on and see if it fits, fingers crossed. These great big heads, that's why we need this huge head hole and the opening at the back. And of course the slightly stretchy fabric helps as well. Oh, look at him. He's so cute. <laughs> okay, so once I'm sure everything's everything's all right, I'm going to then just cross this over at the back and stitch it together like that, or glue it, whichever I decide at the time. Um, so if I wanted to make this into a vest, I'd probably... I might do this actually, I'd, I'd cut a, a bigger scoop of neck perhaps 
yeah the t-shirt it makes sense for it to look like that but actually maybe this one I'm going to cut that neck down a bit okay so there's some, there's my little rolled up sleeves <laughs> and then I'm just going to cut a much a bigger scooped neck so the thing I'll do is I'll, I'll cut slit down to there so it's central and I'm just going to eyeball this so yeah there's a there's a whole backstory behind Willy Wackerstone the wannabe rock star and you can read more about the story in the little pack that comes uh, with your kit I won't uh, I won't tell it all now <laughs> there we go that's quite cute and then so the little trousers are going like this that's it took a bit of coaxing but it might be easier just to cut those sleeves short but I quite like the roll ups now I've done them <laughs> <laughs> oh he's going to be so cute so he still needs some hair he needs his little uh, uh, denim waistcoat with the uh, with the print on the back or shall I do a red one I haven't used any of that red fabric oh I don't know choices choices <laughs> I'm very pleased with him so far um, yeah oh, I think he's going to look sufficiently different from Skid <laughs> I'll be back in a minute for you tomorrow morning for me okay so it's it's the next morning um, I've got my cup of coffee on the go and I'm keen to get going and finish this off now yesterday we made the the little trousers and the braces out of some of the ribbon made the t-shirt and just customized it by scooping the neck out a bit more and rolling up the sleeves so this one is more as it made as per the pattern um, and I've got a couple of other ideas for how you could adapt the shirt pattern I'm gonna make a waistcoat for this little guy and I'm going to make a dress for the girlfriend and the other thing I hadn't done is um, talk about how you do the image transfer so I've brought this up to show you so this is the stuff that I'm using um, it's called Transile Dream it's brilliant stuff the instructions on on the back here are to cover large images um, this is just one tiny image but what I found works really well for just doing this is to cut you just cut out the individual little piece close around the I just I didn't cut around it I just cut a rectangle so I just went like this pretty close to the image and the great thing about this stuff if you use it for things other than this is you, you know it's it stays flexible you can stitch into it you, it it is okay to be washed it doesn't crack and uh, yeah it's brilliant stuff can't remember how much it was I mean it's not cheap cheap but you know for doing something really special it's it's worth it and all you do is put your image face down on your fabric and then for this tiny little size I just found I just pressed it down once and held for a bit just a, a few seconds and lifted up just to make sure it's tacked into place and then and you do it on a firm board not on your padded ironing board do I did it on the breadboard down there <laughs> and then I just pressed down with an iron for about 30 seconds don't move it side to side because you could like warp your image that way just just press down and hold it um and this fabric so then i lifted it up and i thought oh i don't know i'll do another 30 seconds the fabric was fine and the uh, transfer seems to have seems to have stuck okay and then you leave it to cool completely and then you peel off so i've put one on here and one on here just to show you how they look i, I don't think with the colours of them that they're going to work very well on red because where this is white it will show the colour through um, I just don't think it's going to work very well on the red but I think it should look all right on the denim and certainly on the white so that's the one with the, the skanky who is with the, with Johnny's face so the big reveal just peel the backing off and there we are and now of course the image is the right way round and you can see effect faintly where it is you can see where the kind of plasticky coating around the image is but you know perfectly flexible and they say it will stretch with the t-shirt I don't know I'm not going to try that now in case they're lying but brilliant stuff I feel like that is would crack a bit if it was really stretched I don't know but anyway for our purposes this is perfect I love that and I might make an extra t-shirt for her <laughs> saying oops on the back with that one um whoop let's see how it looks on the denim because I haven't tried this before mm. yeah not such a success look because you've got the the shape of the um, plastic stuff around it but it's okay still perfectly usable and that's for a, um, a denim waistcoat I was going to make for a little lady 
Fancy Nancy or whatever she decides to be called. I could even, it could even be a handbag for her, couldn't it? A little rucksack or something. So I put that to one side because I don't need it just yet. What I was going to work on now is a little waistcoat for this guy. So these are my front shirt and back shirt pieces. So I've cut two of the back and one of the front. Now, what I'm going to do to adapt this is to change the, the order of those pieces. So this is going to become the back of the waistcoat and this will become the fronts. Um, now, what you could do is trace around these pattern pieces onto a piece of paper and then experiment with the shape that you want. Uh, there's plenty of fabric to uh, sort of experiment with. So, so what I'm going to do is... I can't lose any of the width there. He needs that width there. Yeah. Okay. I don't want any sleeve to it, so I'm going to take it in before I hit the sleeve. Right. So I'm going to start my curve here. And I could do, I could find something to curve around. Do all the different <laughs> circular shape things I've got on my desk. That looks pretty good. There we go. I think that's going to work. So you don't have to do this, you can just make the pattern up exactly as it is and that will be fine. I just wanted to show a couple of different ways you could adapt it if you want to. So I'm hoping that that is going to give me a good waistcoat shape. I think it will, yeah. So now I'm just going to fold it in half, cut round it so that the other side is exactly the same. Oh, and I've just remembered the other thing I was going to do. I had all these ideas last night. I was just too tired to carry on. I was going to try gluing this to the in, to the inside. It'll either be a red waistcoat with a silver lining or the other way around. And it might be easier to glue that before I cut the pattern piece. I experimented to see how well it would, it would stick with this uh, high tacky high tack glue, and it seems to have stuck really well. Um, yeah. It's not too stiff either, it stayed fairly flexible. I should still be able to stitch into it. Spread out some glue. I think it's going to be easy to spread the glue on this fabric because it's a bit stiffer. Spread that out. Missed a couple of little bits there. So this is meant to be the back and it would meet right in the middle. Now I don't want the waistcoat to come right to the middle and obviously I don't need that tab either. So that can go. And then I want a deeper shape down here too. So I'm going to do the, the same kind of thing with the what did I use with the sleeve? I need to leave enough up there to join the shoulder. That looks pretty good waistcoat shape to me. And then I want the front to come down. So I don't want a, like a neckline there. I want the front to come down. More like this. So I've got that sort of waistcoaty shape. I think with having this extra layer of fabric, I reckon it's going to have the added benefit of I won't need to worry about the edges at all because I've got those two edges glued, those two layers glued together. I don't think it's going to fray out. So, Bertie bonus there. I'm going to glue both these pieces and then trim them to, to, to shape properly once I've got once the glue is dried on there. There just are so many different things you can do with this and adapt it. You can have a whole family of trolls that you can make the whole band if you've got other little troll dolls. Leave that to one side for a minute while well, I do something else. So I think we, it's time to start on his hair. I think probably the easiest way to do this is hot glue. Um, but if you haven't got hot glue, and you could probably make this work, but I think if you haven't got hot glue, I would recommend something like this, strong, clear glue like this. I think hot glue is going to be the probably the easiest thing. So I'm going to get my glue gun heating up. And while that's heating up, I'm just going to have a bit of a think about how I'm going to do the hair. I want to make it look a bit different from, from the other guy, who's mostly black with a white streak. I think maybe I'll put some, um, I'm not going to need hair for the girlfriend because obviously I'm, I'm making over an existing troll and she's already got some hair. I wonder about the red, flaming red hair. Oh look, <laughs> I quite like it like that. I might just go for that, I love that. 
and you can play with this hair it or it's wool so you can use uh, things like hairspray and other hair products on it you could use a little bit of diluted um pva i think that's what i did with this one to make it sort of stay in its spikes um just have a play around with it you could make it quite short I mean, maybe I should make this short. It's just that usually the trolls have that long tufty hair, don't they? But it doesn't have to. If you want to break this, if you want to make it into shorter lengths, don't snip it like that. The way to, to separate it is to just gently pull and then you get shorter pieces like that. And I'm just going to fold, take it, make it as long as I want and then fold it in half and shove it in there. I mean, the, the old punk thing used to be the Mohicans, didn't it? You could definitely make a Mohican. Oh, I can't decide now. That was so funny, just the way it went in. I think that's what I'm going to do, just because it was so comical when it first went in. Okay, so basically, I want these pieces like that, and I'm going to drop some hot glue in there and then push these in. If you've got um, felting needles, it can help to, to use a felting needle just to kind of mat it all in there together, but you but by no means need that. Okay, so I'm just going to squeeze some hot glue in in this cavity. I love hot glue because it's such a quick grab, but because it's quick grab, you do have to work fast with it as well. Pop this in place and I'm going to use the end of my pencil or whatever, whatever I grab to push it in there and make contact with that glue. And it the cavity goes all the way through his body. So uh, got to be a bit gentle. I'm sort of going in and pushing against the sides a bit as well to make contact with all that glue. <laughs> I kind of feel like I want to pull a bit off there to make that the same length so I'm not going to trim it with scissors I'm just going to pull a bit away just hold this end very firmly okay <laughs> oh he needs a name John thought of the skid vicious name I'll see if I can get him to think of another one I can feel that some of the glue has gone down inside the cavity now because he's all warm. It's like his wheel. It's weird. Let's give him his tattoos, shall we? <laughs> so I'm using this. It's a Staedtler permanent fine liner. Obviously, you can't have it. You know, he's a he's tiny scale, so you don't want it to be too big. Um, and it needs to be permanent so that it will work on the plastic. So with them. Um, with skid I put punk on one and rock on the other. I might just put love and hate on this one. <laughs> Doesn't have to be perfect because it's a homemade tattoo that they did with uh, with their mum's needles. Make sure not to smudge it until it's dry. Um, you can also use some um, permanent markers to give them little uh, little make little um, not make manicures. Um, paint pens would work on here as well. Just to show you. <laughs> so you could, if, if you decide not to make the boots, you know, give him some, uh, give him some black nail varnish, <laughs> and maybe put a put a chain round his ankle or something like that instead. Make a little leather cuff for his ankle or something. If you, if you don't want to worry about the boots, you know they're trolls, so they don't mind going barefoot at all. I might give him a little bit of uh, a little bit of an eyeliner. I'm just going to follow the natural moulding that's there. Here we go, where that moulding is. I'm just going to follow that, I think. He can't look anything but cute. <laughs> he wants to look hard, but, you know, he's too cute. Let's add some piercings. A couple of different options here. So, I put these head pins in. You can see that one has got a roundy end and one's got a flat end. And the idea is that you can cut these off like quite close to the head and then that'll give you a little peg to stick the to stick into the um the little troll's face and, and give you like a stud the effect of a stud. Let's go for it. Let's go for a stud in the nose. Um so <laughs> it's not quite human anatomy, is it? But I, I reckon about about there is going to be right so if the plastic is quite thin you should be able to just of course there's hot glue in there now as well <laughs> I'm just using a pokey tool you could use a dart or something make the hole quite big because it will tend to as soon as it comes out the hole will try to close the hole will try to close up again so 
I'm just going to cut this off quite close to the, the head but just leave me enough to anchor it in there so if I hold it so you can see I've just got a tiny piece like that and that might even be a bit too long to go to go in there and the idea is I'll put a bit of glue and then I'll stick that um, inside so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on here and dip the end of that in it might help to have a pair of tweezers to hold this with might be easier right, I'm going to grab hold of it sort of by the neck like that to give me a bit of leverage dip it in the glue I'm hoping it won't need a lot, a lot to hold it in really and then stick it into that hole which is already wanted to close up that's going to need a bit of perseverance there we go it's in Get any bit more? Oh, yeah, this <laughs> is little nose stud. Let's put an earring in and an eyebrow ring. So, with, with the rings, it's easier if you've got plies like this, um, it's a lot easier, but you could do it with tweezers, they're not too difficult to open these. Um, if you open the ring outwards like that, sort of prize the ends apart, it might snap the ring. You have to open it that way not pull it apart like that but that way can you see what I've done there but for our pur purposes it's easier then to just snip a little bit off just to leave a little just to snip a little bit off and leave a little gap let me show you what I mean so I'm just snipping just that tiny little section off so I've, I've sort of pulled the jump ring back into shape, but it's now got that gap. <laughs> Sorry about the glue all over my hands. <laughs> and then that'll make it easier to just make it look as if the, the ring has gone right through. So I've, I've really only got to make tiny holes, two tiny holes, and glue it in, and it's going to look like the ring has gone right through. If I tried to really get it right through, I think it'd be really awkward. Okay, so it took quite a bit of patience and I still haven't managed to get that second end in the hole. I've so I've just glued it. I think it gives I think it gives um a good enough impression. It's tiny. <laughs> so now I'm going to put an ear. Um so let's put let's put the ear stud this time. Let's put it in the other side. Let's have it in the upper, upper part of his ear instead for a change. So I've made a quick, quick hole. I'm not going to bother trying to come out the other side. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut off just a little bit of that um, head pin. Keep hold of the bit I want so it doesn't <laughs> ping everywhere. Right, I'm just going to dub up a tiny tiny bit of glue and pop this through the hole there we go I would say doing the little studs like that is definitely easier than doing the rings but I quite like the look of the eyebrow ring and the more I look at him the more I wish I hadn't done that to his little eyes now but he likes it. He thinks it looks well cool. So, right. So this must be dry now. Let's put this out of the way before I stick something to it that I didn't want to. And I've got an idea that I'm going to use a little scrap of this um, uh, fur fabric to trim this. Um, but we'll see how that goes. So now these pieces are all dry. I wish I wasn't working in such chaos, it doesn't look very professional. But I'm not to be fair, I'm not professional, am I? So, um, I've still got half of that silver fabric left there to use for the girlfriend. Because she wants to look glamorous too. So I'm going to cut this piece where I drew the front of the waistcoat, the, the changed shape. I 
I'm going to cut that first and then I can use it as a guide to cut the other one. Let's match this up. So I've put the red sides together. We could do it the other way around and put the silver sides together, whichever, but you need to make sure you've got opposite. <laughs> and I'm just going to cut around that shape now. So that they're both exactly the same. And then I've got this piece as well. And I'm going to, in a minute, because I've changed, because I've now angled that down, this side seam has become shorter, so I'm going to have to make sure that I match that on the on the back piece as well. But we'll do that in a sec. Side seam wants to only be that wide. That long, rather. Just fold this up, give me a line to cut along, that'll work. There we go. Really, the only thing he still needs is, is the boots. I'm gonna have to clear the decks a bit before I make the boots. There's other things you can do with the hair, different suggestions I've got for the hair that I put in with the instructions. I think if I do some more, I might try fur fabric instead. I don't know, it might be a it might be a cheaper option for a start. <laughs> I've suggested um, a couple of ideas for accessories and things. And certainly if you've got stuff knocking around that you think you could um, turn into fun accessories for them. You know, once you start looking at little things for making miniatures, you never want to throw anything away. Oh, I'm going to turn my hot glue gun off for a minute, I think. I've just realised I've got this bit of chain I haven't done anything with. So Skid's got the chain attached to his trousers. I've just stitched it. I've just put a stitch through at either end. I'm just wondering if I can do something different with uh, with this one. Maybe he could have one attached to his waistcoat or something. I think maybe I'll end up stitching one bit to his waistcoat and one to his pocket. I think that would be fun. So let's stitch one end to his pocket now while I think about it. I've put the little tiny... I've lost most of mine. <laughs> the little tiny... They're actually black and blue seed beads on to use um, to look like buttons. So you could stitch them onto shirts and trousers and things if you wanted to. So let's say this is going to go as if it's in a pocket. I'm just going to do a couple of little double stitches to anchor it first. And then I'm just going to, I think I'll stitch through that third link there and leave this dangling a little bit that would be fun now with the chain you'll get different chains um they all look slightly different let's show you the one in this one and again they're just um retrieved from bits of uh, you know reclaimed from bits of old broken jewelry and stuff so they're all slightly different but you'll have about the same length most of them are more silvery colored like this so that's that's attached on there and when he's got his waistcoat on i'll just bring it up as if it's going inside the waistcoat so he's just got a bit of chain there it also occurred to me that these so these little tubular things you'll find in your kit look like kind of tubular beads and I thought they might be fun to create bits of jewellery or something with but they're actually wire crimps so they will squash flat and I think what I'm going to try doing is squashing a couple of them flat I think I put four in the kits squeeze you could probably they're so thin you could probably do it with tweezers to be fair if you haven't got a pair of pliers but pair of pliers isn't usually too difficult to get hold of so you literally hold it between your pliers like that and just squeeze it's not hard I think that gives quite a good effect of a little braces thing I think what I'll do is put a tiny dob of the glue on each, on the bottom of each of the braces and then just pop them on it just sort of gives that I think, gives an impression of you're not going to see them too much anyway but I think it's quite a nice little touch. <laughs> it's bugging me that I don't really, I'm not keen on what I've done with his eyes. I'm just curious to see if it will come off with this alcohol or will I mess it up? Let's pick a bit I don't like anyway. Yes, it would, but it's going to be fiddly to get in there. What I might do is if I take it half away like that, that might be a nice effect. 
I got to be careful I don't dissolve the glue that's holding my <laughs> eyebrow ring in. Actually, it's interesting what that's doing is just giving it a more um, more subtle effect actually, which I quite like. So I'm glad I did this. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the end off of this candle holder. Pretty easy. That might be useful for something else. I <laughs> don't know what. Um, and I've got to make yet another hole in his face. If you look at the corners of the mouth, the plastic goes quite thin. It seems to be especially thin on this side. So that's where I'm going in to make my hole. Right, so I put my little dob of glue on. And now I'm just going to push that into that hole that I've made. Let's make his a little bit shorter, like he's had his on the go for a bit longer. And then I can use a red pen, a red pen marker. Or a grey one or a black one, whatever, to make it look like it's lit. I haven't got one handy at the moment, so I'm going to leave that for now. The other thing I wanted to have a go at making is a um, microphone. So this stuff I'm going to save it this is for the shoelaces I'm going to snip a little bit of this to be like the, the kind of cord that comes off the microphone it does it in my mind anyway I'm just going to cut a little length of this to be the um, the kind of handle of the microphone I'm going to coat this this end in glue and I'm going to push it inside this black bead and then you could just um assume it's a wireless microphone, colour it, colour it black and, and use it like that. I think that would give enough the effect of a microphone. But I've also put this shrink tubing in. So this is the stuff that you use when you're... I use it for wiring up miniatures and things um, for electricity. Um, so where you've got several a bunch of several um, wires together, you put a length of this around it, blast it with your heat gun just briefly, just and it kind of shrinks down to fit and holds everything together. But I thought it would be quite good for putting over this with a little piece of this. So I'm not going to use it here for what it's meant for, but a lot of the time with miniature things, you're not using things. <laughs> you're using things for completely different purposes. Pretty good. Pull that down a bit so it doesn't show. Use a bit of emery board to smooth that off then um, I think I'm just going to colour that in black as well black sh um, permanent marker should work on his sharpie or whatever would work those um, you can get those uh, fine liner sharpies now they're really good because this cord is um, wired it will hold its shape so I can just um, I could just wrap it around something <laughs> that just to, to give the wire a bit of a shape and then that could be sort of glued into his hand or just sort of hanging around as part of my photo shoot when I when I do it <laughs> so you can see how adaptable these little patterns are I mean you're working tiny on these little trolls but um I'm sure you guys will come up with some clever ideas for different ways to adapt these um, I think I might actually glue the waistcoat open a little bit so that it so that it shows. Um, but I'll do that. I'll do that um, off camera in a minute because I need to get that right under my nose and I'll stitch this on. And then all I've got left to do really is is the boots. So it's time to start on the on the boots now. And as I say, this is the fiddliest bit of all. And if you want to avoid it, you could easily just give them a little manicure. <laughs> Give him a tattoo on his on his foot, maybe, or, or a little bracelet cuff, you know, whatever. If, if you want to avoid this fiddly bit, <laughs> you can easily get round it. But I'm a glutton for punishment. I've got my pattern pieces. I have stuck a piece of this clear packing tape over it. So I've, that, before, and I've done that before I cut them out. Um, because it'll make them more durable and also um, these are inkjet printed so if you then splash them with water or something it's not going to matter. I'm only going to make one boot so where I've, but where I've got cut two on here that is for one boot obviously you're going to need two halves of the upper and I've decided the best way for me is to use this black marker because I think it will show enough 
for me to cut. Um, but it's not going to show if, if a little bit that ends up getting included in the finished boot, it's not really going to be a problem. So I don't know if the camera will show. Yes, it will. You can see that that does show up. Although this is a black marker, it shows up on there quite well. As I pointed out in the instructions, there is a very minimal seam allowance here, like a millimetre or two. The idea is just really to pinch the pieces together. Either pinch them together and just do a over, small over, neat over so stitch, or pinch them together and glue them. Um, if you're going to sew them, I did try that. I did do um, sew them on the first pair. It might help to just make some holes first that you can then put your needle in and out more easily. Um, and I will need this to make holes for the shoelaces later. I mean, I could do them now. I wonder if it would be easier to do them now. The holes might disappear and have to be made again. Maybe if I make marks where the holes are going to be first so that they're easier to find, that will help me later. And I've just done two holes there. I will make the holes and we'll see how that goes. If you mess up one of these pieces, don't, oh, don't worry, there is plenty there to cut another piece. So, Right, so, first bit is to join the two uppers together at the back heel. So this is the, this is the back heel. So I just want a tiny, tiny little bead of glue along there, not too much. And then I'm going to press the two uppers together at that back heel. There we go. So I'm literally pinching them together just enough to hold them. Let's see if I can show you on here. So there we go, that shows you. course I can always trim it a little bit afterwards but you need it to still be big enough to fit on the troll's foot. Okay so I'm just going to peg that together just for probably a few seconds is long enough and then we want to join them together at the front but only part way so I'm just going to go up to about there because you need to be able to get it on the foot and you need to leave room for the laces here. There we go and peg it again so that's the upper put together. So the next thing is to fit the sole inside the upper. So I'm just going to leave this to dry for a few seconds before I do that. I might as well get my two outer soles cut out while I'm waiting for that. So here's the outer sole piece which is bigger. This ends up getting trimmed um, afterwards to sort of neaten it up. Now they are marked heel and toe and they're very slightly differently shaped. I don't know how much odds it's going to make in practice. I need to because I want to stack them up like that to make it more platformy. So that's just giving me just a very, a very small seam. I do wonder if it might be easier to put the laces in now while I can still get my finger inside. So I'm going to try that this time. I can kind of see where I marked my... And this is where I've got to be a little bit gentle. I don't want to split the leather. Leather look fabric. Because I've got a double thickness of the cord going through now. Okay, that's done it. There we go. I've got my boot all laced up. <laughs> um, and so now I want to put the, um, the sole on. So I'm just going to run a little bead glue. I think I'll just go about halfway because it's going to dry up. Spread it out a bit, spread it out towards the edges. I don't want it coming in too far. Now this is the really tricky bit. Fix this sole inside this shape. So I'm going to find my center at the back and line that up with the center back seam, seam of the uppers. So I'm just now going to walk my way around, 
pinching those together but not too hard so I just want to make sure they're in right before I fully because sit sitting doing this by myself I probably have my visor on and have it right up under my nose I think that's going to fit in quite nicely actually and then once I'm sure of where I want it I'll pinch it all together and add more glue where I need it some of that glue is dried now of course of course it has if you're stitching, I would advocate find the find the centre point of the back of your of the heel, end of the sole, and stitch that in line with the that centre seam at the back, and then just work your way around. And like I said before, I would advocate piercing some little holes first to make it a little bit easier. But I mean, you might be fine with it. It's just you know, it's just what I found. So with a bit of a perseverance, this is sticking. It might be that that tacky glue would have been a better uh, glue to use for this. I would say whatever glue you're going to use, you've got enough leather there. Just try a couple of pieces, sticking a couple of small pieces together first to see how well it stays stuck and how long you've got working time you've got before it sets solid for whatever glue you're going to use yeah. and then it's just a case of patiently going around pinching it together slotting a little bit more glue in the toothpick might come in handy for that just to just if you squeeze a bit out on here take it on the toothpick and just use that to slot a little bit extra glue in where you need it I think I'm just going to peg this together for a few minutes or just a minute or so just to give that chance to stick before I do the, the other half. Okay so I left that just for a couple of minutes just to make sure this side was all stuck and now I'm going to go around and do the other side just the same. Okay so just put that little bead of glue just around the edge and then just press them together. It should fit pretty exactly if you've cut it out carefully. Right you can see that these outer soles are quite a bit bigger um, and I did that on purpose because it's just easier just to stick them on and then trim them to fit. So now it's time to put on the toe cap and the heel cap. This sort of rounder one is the toe cap. You can always check back anyway. I want to go right to the edges. I don't want the edges lifting up. So you might want to before you stick the toes and heels on you might need to just slightly trim and if your seam is sticking out a bit too much where the heel is going to go you might need to trim that down as well. Right and then it's time to just trim the sole to, to fit around the shoe so I've just I've trimmed it pretty close just perhaps slightly bigger than the shoe all around. I'm just going to tie my little shoe up so I can show you what it looks like. Okay, and then once they're once they're on his little foot, I'll uh, I'll trim the ends off so they're not too long. This may be a little bit rough and ready, but you know it's a troll's boot. <laughs> so let's see if we can get them on his feet. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I've relaced both his boots and got them on. I think they look quite cute. <laughs> see what see what I mean? It can look quite rough and ready, but once you've got it all all put together the, the overall effect is really cute it gives you a little bit of a better look at his, his little boots you're never going to see them properly again now though but hey so here they are that's two different things you can do with it i will do this in a separate video i think um because this is going to be way too long already and i'll i'll share some pictures of them all in the, the usual places as well. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea because it is quite fiddly, you need a lot of patience to do it. Um, but if you are into doing this kind of thing, um, maybe you'll give it a go. Let me know Let me know what you think. Um, if you'd be interested in having the downloadable pattern, do give me a shout. And um, also, if you'd be interested, if you've already got your own trolls and you just want the pattern and the, and the fabrics to do this design, then um, let me know because I could, I could just put some little sort of fiver packs together as well with just... Uh, 
just the fabrics and findings and patterning so let me know it's just putting a toe in the water really see what everybody thinks run it up the flagpole and see who salutes it as they say thank you very much for joining me i hope you found that useful if you're watching this because you've um, already bought a pack and you've come to see um, how to use it then let me know how you get on share some pictures i'll put my link tree in the description box and from there you can find your way to our discord community where there are places that, where you can share the stuff you've made and what you're creating or just come and say hello it's a very friendly group and um, it's getting really lively in there and also there's the arty farty annie group on facebook um, if you prefer that i'm going to keep that going as well so uh, yeah just uh, just show me what you what you're doing or if you've got your own trolls and you don't want to buy this kit and you just want to show me what you've done with your own trolls i'll be happy to see that as well so uh thanks very much again and i will see you again really soon <laughs>